objectives are and we need to mop up cases. Uh, Mustafa, you are on. No, no, but he needs to tell us what they are doing. <laughs> so, they've been doing it since when? On Africa, here. You can hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, are you, can you hear us? I can hear you, but I don't Okay, know. we can hear you now. Okay, good. good. So, two questions, yes. very simple. One, um, uh, objectives for uh, Dr. Um, Shahid. What objectives were So, the, before we, just quickly, let me give you the case because the objectives were determined by the case. So, this is a lady, I, I can't remember her age, maybe in her 50s, with dysphagia and found to have a esophageal mass. So this is an esophageal mass, right? Exactly. So the objective here is to intubate and, and reach the, uh, the, the area of obstruction. Yes. And, uh, and, then, and then evaluate whatever you can see. Right. So we, the idea was to do T-staging. Um, previously, her last EGD was about three weeks ago and apparently at the time they could get the upper endoscope through. So we started with an upper EGD scope and there was a mass um, which was extending from 25 centimeters to 30 centimeters from the incisors and it became stenotic enough to the point that we couldn't advance the scope. So you couldn't advance a, advance a D, uh, regular gastroscope? Exactly. So, we so it's T3 for sure anyway? That's exactly one of the points that we discussed was that, that by definition uh, almost always is a T3. Um, and we were only asked to do T-staging. Um, in this situation, the other sort of question was, should we do linear or radial? Um, Dr. Shahid has done radials before, and his preference was to see if we can do linear evaluation, um, which sounded reasonable because, you know, we can get a fair amount of information with it linear too. So what we've done is advanced the scope um, to uh, as far as we could go, which is about 28, 29 centimeters. You can see that I've done a few things. Because this was a T-stage, I did a few things um, differently. One is that I changed the frequency. You can see I went to 10 megahertz to get better resolution. Secondly, you can see that uh, we started out with less magnification, but in order to evaluate it better, we actually uh, did increase the depth. Uh, or decrease the depth so that we could get a very close look. The other important thing is this green arrow, as you remember, is what allows you to know where, what's your optimal range for um, resolution. And this you can actually change. You can change on the, if you see on the screen, you can go up and down on it based on what your area of interest is. So since our area of interest is the T stage, we're, we're keeping it quite uh, zoomed in and we're keeping the arrow close to that area where we would be interested in T-staging. So <clears throat> at this point, Dr. Shahid can demonstrate to you what we uh, saw of the tumor um, by using the linear echo endoscope and how we determined what the T-stage the was. Prior to that, however, since we're in this position, I'll just freeze it and you can make out at least here the esophageal layers. So the first layer won't be uh, as, as obvious to see and actually with the compression from the scope, even the, the first, um, the, the sub, uh, sorry, the muscularis propria is getting compressed, but you can see it on the outside here. And then you have the submucosa, and then you have the muscularis propria. So, I don't know if I, I can't tell if we're seeing two layers here, for instance, of the muscularis, the circular and the longitudinal. I'm getting somewhat confused, but 
irrespective here the depth of the esophageal wall is not very the esophageal wall thickness so sorry mustafa yes so can you just tell us how um, so the objective here would be to look at wall thickness A? yes it was specifically they just want t st staging on the lesion Sorry, sorry. Huh? So objectives for the candidate were no, no objectives in the sense the referral was to see um, whether the aorta was involved or not. Generally, that's what it is because we know it's T3 already. Yeah. Almost. So you're now going to show us the different layers. Yes. So can we start with the a little proximal and see the normal esophagus? Yeah. And then come down. Sure. So absolutely. everybody can appreciate. Yes. Can you can you uh, withdraw the scope? Good. Okay, good. So now just relax. Excellent. Good. And now. So this is max. Ma you're on maximum magnification or like middle? No, I can go higher actually. Yeah, we can go. One more would be lovely. Okay, excellent. Yeah, now we start losing no, no, our no, now quality. I think it becomes two, yeah. yeah. One more less. Yeah. I mean, I reduce by one more. So and this is. Yeah, this is. You're okay is, with this? Yeah, or maybe one less. I don't know. It's up to you. Okay. So now just we're going to spin the, relax your big wheel so you're not compressing the layers and you're just going to uh, ad advance or pull back the scope and usually in that scenario you can, you can start making out the layers or you can freeze the image and then make out the layers. So pull back some more, there and now just now spin clockwise and counter. I'm actually going to increase, okay, yeah, don't pull out more, advance, it felt that we had a better view slightly lower down, so we'll just keep, keep doing this till we have a better evaluation of the layers, because the layers, yeah, we can't, are, we can't make them out very well, no, 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 no not, not yet, yeah, so keep, keep so do you, do you, do you ever use the balloon, um, um, just to look at that, or you don't use the balloon at all? In this situation, typically I tend not to because it can compress the layers, but we certainly can. I mean, oftentimes these patients, because of their dysphagia in our practice, are uh, they're intubated. So I will have a, my approach in those situations will be to actually distend with water instead of using a balloon, so that I don't uh, I don't uh, compress with my balloon. Okay, fine. So you so the the bottom line is you don't use balloon. No. Esophageal uh, assessment with a side view scope, even if you have a balloon, you don't. And looking at the layers, you look at the much proximal to the tumor, so that yeah. you can appreciate the layers if you want to. And then you obviously go and see. One of the things that we all know is that if your scope does not pass through the esophagus, then you know it's going to be T3. So you're safe in writing T3 for that. Um, and, and can you sh can you now s we start I, seeing I some? I think we're seeing some. some I, so you here, I think we're getting compressed. But if you if you if I just step away from that area, I think it becomes uh, this to me looks like muscular. Yes, corporate. I, ca I can see that layer, and that is submucosa. Yeah, and then that is muscular. Then beyond that, mucosa. it becomes a little unclear and fuzzy. But the, yes. the muscularis, um, you know, can be can be seen here, which yes. is the m right. And okay. now one thing I will say is that here I almost imagine two thin layer black lines, two black which make, makes me wonder if this is circular uh, and longitudinal muscle layers. Um, okay, we can see that also. Can you reduce the mag a little bit? See, maybe you sure. can see it a little better. I'm not sure. Yeah. Just spin the scope. Either way, it's it's somewhat hazy. I, yeah, it's not very clear here. Yeah, let me do one other thing. Let me see if I can. We went up to 12, but. I can see the muscularis here very yeah, nicely. Yeah, exactly. And, and that, to be honest, is the, is the is main. The critical layer here. Yeah, it's the critical layer. Yeah. Okay. So Anything before and after. That's what you want to see, really. And this, Once the tumor this goes is, through. This is the muscularis, right? This one here. So, so now, go ahead. So you can advance. So we're gonna. This is somewhat of a limited evaluation, like you predicted. Um, if if the patient. So a couple of things as we advance. 
So now he's getting resistance and I can tell that just not necessarily even by looking at his hands but when the when the up the withdraw can just withdraw a bit and when you advance go ahead and advance this foot you see this tension on the tissue here that's right we and, can see and, it and when you see tension that means that you're hitting a stricture so that's something to keep in mind here again you can see the muscularis mucosa you have the left atrium behind and you can see part of a lymph node here that's right now what we were practicing before you came when when we came before we came online was uh, to go the the concept that you were discussing about using your uh, right hand as a fulcrum and and spinning the scope so that you can get a 360 degree evaluation without having to literally go 360 degrees so we'll see if dr shahid can just uh, demonstrate that demonstrate that for us so and, and keep an eye on his hand this this, so, this let's go back to the start okay, of the aorta, right? The so, in this situation, typic typically what I would do is use the aorta as the landmark. Okay. So, I've gone, count, he's gone counterclockwise. I, I don't know if you can see his hands. But yeah, we can see. Okay, good. So, his left hand is... focus a little bit Please, a little bit more. You don't do it. You're just like this. Camera? Camera click here or not? Call the camera guy and tell him to focus more. Anyway, we can see it. Okay, good. So you can see the aorta, and and if you go slightly lower down, just get it linear. Okay, there you go. So we see the nice, uh, uh, very uh, smart walls of a aorta, an arterial structure. So now let's go clockwise towards. Uh, now here you were starting to see some T-staging, but we're going to ignore that for now just because of the purpose of demonstration. We're going to try and maintain our scope depth through the incisors, so the distance there should not change. Thank and, you. And what he's doing is he's going clockwise, and the idea is to do a full 360 degree uh, evaluation. If you look, stop there. Just stop, freeze, uh, Dr. Shahid. Just freeze as you were. Okay, no, 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 go back. Go back, go back, go back, keep going the way you did it. You see what is happening? Now it's a bit better, but when you, if you freeze yourself there and we look at the scope here, what happened was there was a little loop at the lower end that was created. So yeah. while you were trying to move, you're looking at the screen, but your scope wasn't actually torquing as it should have. Right. So that's something that happens. And when you have got that hand there and you keep it a little supported, then the chances are that you would be able to achieve what. Uh, Better. Yes. Is desired. Mustafa wants you to. Yes, and yes, and he's also while you were talking, he stepped back some more, so to make the scope linear, and and now we will have him continue to do that movement clockwise, and also keep an eye on his left hand because there's there are a few things that you can do to help here. You go clockwise. There was a spinal vertebrae, and now we have the aorta back. So we have done this 360 degrees. Um, a couple of things I would just encourage here, relaxing this right hand, letting this support the scope, let this scope do the work. And then this is what made a difference in terms of several degrees of, of evaluation. That at the end, what you have is um, when you're extending uh, or going counter, you extend your wrist. And that gives you a few extra degrees. And then when you go clockwise, initially you neutralize your wrist, but as you keep coming over, 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 your wrist also comes over, and that helps you get uh, around some more. So in about a 120 degree movement, you actually achieve a 360 degree movement. And that is the idea, you do that at one depth, then you pull back a centimeter or so. Now we're already in this movement, so already on the right side, so we can so now go the now other go way. Back. Just do the way you were, yeah, keep going. Excellent, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Huh? There you go. This is an esophageal mass and the scope isn't going through, right? Uh, yeah. So, so can you can you show us now closer to the mass and... and, yes. and so we're about 26, so we're going to advance the scope and Dr. Shah is going to uh, do the same rotational movements to assess the, the T stage. Advance it. 
Yeah, and to advance, you have to get closer to the patient's mouth, right? So you have control. The idea is to always have control. And then, basically, you relax your big wheel because now you're hitting resistance, right? And now, so this is uh, what made us feel that this was a T3 lesion. If you keep going counter, so extend your advance and extend your wrist and extend your big wheel, right? So what you want to do is try and see more to the left. So go ahead and you can't advance more because you will end up yes. perforating. This is the, this so big wheel towards, away from you. Okay. Okay. Away you also from want you. to see if the aorta is actually yeah. Right? So it, there seems to be a nice plane in between right now. Yes, we can right? see it you well. Can see, up, yeah. You can see that linear plane. Are you, are you all understanding? Wait a second. Uh, eight second this is the tumor. This so is you see. All the layers are gone. You can't see any layers here. Yeah. And this is the aorta. You can see this, this separating area all the way. Okay? So that is what a lot of times of fat plane separation. So you've not, the aorta is in this, in the area that we have examined. It's there, exactly. The you haven't lost that. Time. Okay. You now see keep, keep going counterclockwise. Line, there's a clear divide keep here between keep the keep going counter. tumor, which is this above. Can you advance the gently? And the aorta here. Advanced gently. Thoda sir, okay, okay. There you go. Right? No, then you would actually not see this. This whole black thing would be coming all the way. And the other thing there is, we know. Yeah, there, you won't see any division. There is a clear division there. That that's very nicely shown, uh, yes. Mustafa. That's lovely. And and here, this is an artifact because we're compressing with our scope. Yeah, so you can get f fooled. So if you relax your big wheel, and you can redetermine that that plane is still there, because you see how, how our probe is pushing against the esophageal wall. And, and interesting that from here. There's nothing more you can you can tell really from from here. All you can say is that well, you know, this is most likely T3, could be more because you haven't seen the whole thing. And the area that you examined, or your report will say that you know this is T3. The area that was examined, the, the aorta, the plane was clearly visible, so it wasn't yeah. involved. But you can only say for the area that you have seen, you haven't seen all the way. So right. it's very important to say that you haven't seen all the way. So you don't want people to totally rely on that. I mean, I think CT scans, I occasionally get this because when the CT scan says there is involvement, they say, can you tell us if it's correct or not? And uh, you can only say for the area that you have seen that it is or it isn't. Okay, and then just for dem demonstration of structures, so obviously you have aorta, and this is the plural reflection of the aorta. And then if you go, if you go, um, keep going clockwise for a second, like you were before, so right there, okay, stop. Uh, so we have air artifact. So, so you have lymph node, and what you also have here is, you see how this is relatively smooth, but here it becomes irregular. The 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 wall of the esophagus. So when you have what's called serrations. Sorry, uh, Mustafa, we missed that. So. So you see, the wall is relatively smooth. So technically, that would be if it's up to the muscularis propria and not beyond. That's T2. To to become T3, it has to break through the wall. And so when you have irregularity and serrations like kingrej on on a on a knife, then that tells you that it's actually broken through and this is a T3 lesion. Okay. Okay? So, and then I just wanted to just, because for pattern recognition, as, as we go clockwise again, I wanted to just show the, the participants one other thing. So keep going, keep going clockwise, keep going, keep going, like you were before. Okay? And right there. Okay, stop, or I'll stop. So one of the things that you must remember in EUS uh, console is the is a little uh, round wall-like structure. So when you freeze, you can actually go back and see. Yeah. Up until the last time you froze. Mm -hmm. So you have the option of going back. So if you miss something, don't panic. Stop yeah, I. Go back with the, so uh, you see. The you see yes. these numbers at the bottom, so there are 
over a thousand frames and you can you can basically go frame by frame so we're in in that little loop of over a thousand frames we're at frame number 66 but those get reset you know because there's a limit to which they 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 save so just for just for sort of education purposes this structure are these are vertebral bodies okay so that can also be used to see if I, if you're if you you looked at it on one side and then you're like I'm not sure if I'm over to the other side or not so this can be helpful too uh, so just, these are subtle things that with experience and time you will be able to easily identify yeah so you can pull that I, I we're pretty much done here I mean we can finish the exam but okay yeah was there anything else you would like us to talk about we can quickly look to see the uh, the, we know that there are subcranial lymph nodes because we identified that station. As we come to the aorta, if you, re, you ret, withdraw, my, my approach is slightly different from what uh, Dr. Khalid does. I keep pulling back. And then when, when, it's, when I see the arch of the aorta, which is about there, mm. then I will do my big look towards me. Actually, I have it the other. I have the scope on the other side of the aorta. So if you go back all the way, so go clockwise all the way. Yeah, there is the spine. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. So you have the arch now. Yes. Pull now, or the aorta descending. Okay. Pull, pull back. And when I'm reaching the arch of the aorta, you see how it's like starting to turn. At this point, I will do big wheel towards me and advance the scope a slight amount, big wheel towards me a lot. Pull towards you, big wheel. Okay, good. Advance the scope and go clockwise. There you go. Keep the scope down. And now you see the two, the two structures. So I'm just going to help you a bit. So advance the scope. Uh, okay, let me... Let me there big big look towards you more there, and you have the aorta on the right, the pulmonary artery on the left, the the cursors on the the, the pointers on the pulmonary artery. This would be level station four L, okay? This and yeah, and then this is theoretically the AP window back here, and that is station five, and there are you know Google images of where the lymph nodes are. Um, but we don't see any obvious lymph nodes. If you just spin here, go ahead and spin in this area, uh, you may or may not see nodes. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'm going to take a quick look sure. um, and then we can just be done here. So we're going to report subcranial lymph nodes and malignant appearing. Uh, depth we measured earlier, T3 in the visualized portion of the uh, aorta, there was no clear involvement uh, of, of yet no break in the plane between the lesion, the esophagus and the aortic wall. And uh, we didn't see any obvious uh, additional lymph nodes. Um, the yeah, the idea is to do a three. When you have a linear, doesn't mean that you get you get to do half an exam. The idea is to use your smaller probe to do a full 360 evaluation. So when we say that you can do most of your evaluation with the with the linear, and that's the idea that you can do all three. So that's really important if you're not going to use a radio. So thank you, thank you, Shukriya. Of course, yeah, you did really well. Thanks. Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm.